This is all my triathlon equipment. These are worth so much money that they are more expensive than the car I'm driving right behind me. In this video, we're diving into something every triathlete needs to know, the true cost of triathlon gear. I'll break down the expenses you can expect so you can plan your budget wisely. I'll also share recommendations based on my experiences helping you pick out essential gear from what's optional, especially if you're new to the world of triathlon. Now let's jump right into it. First off, swimsuit. One should suffice if you're starting out. These are usually less than $50. For women, it might be a little bit more. Swim goggles and swim cap. This selfish goggles, I have one mirror, so if it's sunny, the mirror protect my eyes from the sun. And if it's a clear, I'm swimming in the early morning at 5.30 a.m. where the sun's not out, it's still dark out. I use this clear goggle so I can see better underwater, above water when I'm swimming. I do have swim cap. I don't wear it too often, only when I'm doing a fast interval in the training or at like swim competition. There's latex and silicone. Personally, I like silicone because it uh, just feels better on my head if I do wear a swim cap. As for the swim gear, let's take a look at what I use for training and let's take a look at what I use for racing. I currently have a mesh bag full of equipment. Let's take a look at what's inside. Kickboard buoy, paddles, fins, and my snorkel. These may look small, but this cost over $100 when I purchased these. I would say you don't really need fins, maybe not paddles, snorkel, but at least if you're starting out, I would recommend a kickboard and a pool buoy. And you might not even need these because some pools, most pools I've been to, they provide, they have kickboards and buoy on the deck. After the kickboard and buoy, I would recommend getting paddles. Next, I would recommend the fins to get after the paddles. Good way to help with the body position if you're starting out doing some drill, kick, easy swimming. And the last thing to get on the list is a snorkel. Whenever I practice open water swimming, I like to be safe, so I have this new wave swim buoy that you can just blow up and attach it to your hip and this will act like a lifeguard buoy so if you ever need a stop, take a break, you can always hold on to this in the water. The water is cold and everyone is required to wear a wetsuit. I have this Selfish G-Range wetsuit which is quite expensive. This is on the more advanced side. If it's wetsuit illegal in triathlon competition, I would require to be wearing either my triathlon kit or I do have a swim skin. So my swim skin selfish is coming. This is the cost. If you're starting out and the water's not too cold, you can even do a, a swim in your triathlon kit. And that's what I did in one of my first five races. It was a pool swim. And if the water's too cold, there's just some wetsuits on Facebook Marketplace that's pretty affordable. I bet you can find one under for sure $200. As for the bike, it is the most expensive part in the triathlon sport. Here I have my three bikes, the Diamond Radiant road bike, the Diamond Carbide gravel bike, which I'm using now instead of the road bike so I can go gravel and on the road. And then my main triathlon bike, the TT bike, the Diamond Moguls. Currently set up with a 50 tooth and 1036 cassette in the back, SRAM Red, very custom bike. And has served me well the past year and a half so far, ever since I signed with my first professional triathlon team. So this is the most important thing of the bike, which is the bike. These are thousands of dollars, very advanced bike setup, very custom. If you are a beginner, I got my first road bike at a Facebook marketplace. So I bought it at $600. It was a specialized Roubaix. And I also had the clip-on aero bars. When I did my first triathlon, I did get a Cervelo P series and that was about $3,000. So now we've gone over the bike. There's various places you can buy used bike. And if, there, if that's something you're interested in starting out triathlon or thinking about getting your first time trial bike, that's where I would go. The next thing we have is the bike helmet. And the bike helmet protects your head, protects your brain. Helmets you can find on Facebook Marketplace, uh, garage sales, you can get a cheap one if you're starting out as a beginner. If you're more advanced going into crit races, bike racing, 
uh, a more aero helmet can cost up to a hundred, maybe up to two hundred dollars for a road cycling helmet. Same with the sunglasses, you can find at any shop, any sunglasses shall do. This is the Pacific Cycling Sunglasses where it's clear when it's nighttime and it turns orange and protects from the UV sunlight during the daytime. So whenever I do bike rides, I always have my repair kit with me. This goes on the front end, but usually people have a seat saddle bag that you can put all your repair kit. So in this, I have extra tube. Instead of CO2, I have this Cycle Plus device where it pumps up two tires to 100 PSI. So this acts like a CO2 and a CO2 adapter. So I can carry this on the plane whenever I go race and I don't have to buy CO2 everywhere I go. My triathlon bike is set up with tubes. My gravel bike and my race setup is tubeless. So it has sealant inside the, between the tire and the wheel. So I have this repair kit for the tubeless setup. Tire levers to take the tire off and my multi-tool device, which unscrews the through axle and it has all different Allen wrenches sizes. This definitely costs above $100 for a repair kit. And sometimes, depending on where you live, you end up buying a couple tubes as you get flat tires pretty recently, but I haven't really gotten a flat in a while, knock on wood. Bike pump, about $50, $60. Cycling shoes, I have the Lake Triathlon shoes the wide version. When you have multiple bikes like this, you have more responsibility and that means more maintenance, taking it to the shop if there's problem. It's like having three cars. If there's, if one car has a problem, you take it to your shop, you spend money and you take each three cars as you drive them all the time to oil changes. That's why I took all the component from my road bike because I have two sim like similar road bikes. I took it to the gravel bike so I can just uh, have two main bikes. Two more accessories, the Smart Trainer I got for $600. Game changer, I really got a lot stronger with this. And then my new Bike Box Allen from Full Send Cycle. I'll be using this for the first time for Ironman Texas. I do have a bike bag, but if I do travel internationally and more with my bike, I want a good hard case to protect my bike. If you're a beginner, you you can get away with using a bike for like a sprint or an Olympic tri triathlon when you're traveling. But if you're getting very serious, I recommend a bike bag or a bike box. So you're using your own bike, you know your own measurement and you're, you're on your own bike. And lastly, different bike tools like different Allen wrenches, a chain remover and all the other stuff I have so I can take my bike apart, clean it, do my own maintenance and also put it together for packing when I go to race it. These bike tools, I probably spent about $200 for them. As for the run, it's probably the cheapest to get into. Once you start running a lot, then you have to buy more shoes, which can get a little bit more expensive. One of my all-time favorite shoe is the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2s. I found the Nike Streak Fly uh, to be my favorite for speed sessions, like tempo, track session, and this is my race shoes, the Nike Vaporfly Next% 3. This is $280. Now for running shoes, it's not a one brand fits all. I did start running in Brooks and got into Nike, Saucony, just tried different stuff, A6, and just found out that the Saucony Endorphin Speed 2 is my favorite. So other than that, shoes, clothes is pretty much all you need for running. The next thing I would invest in uh, if I was a beginner is a watch. I have the Garmin 4 Runner 945 currently, but I did get a watch for $150 back then when I had the Garmin 4 Runner 235. For that, I just kept track of my run paces. Next after a watch is a heart rate strap. So this would tell me my heart rate as I'm running. And this Garmin HRM Pro connects to my watch. When I started out, I got a $55, $60 Garmin HRM heart rate strap, it was the, the one below this. And it's a game changer. This was one of the first couple of things that my coach Natasha, she's still my coach now, recommended to get this. And bike pedals, smart trainer, watch was, uh, was those couple things when I first started and that what she recommended. And I think that still is the case right now. Running shoes, make sure you look at the bottom of the soles and you're not running too much in them or you can get injured if you're running these too much. Watch to keep track of your time and distance and your paces when running. And then a heart rate strap. 
And then after the swim bike run, when you do compete in a triathlon, here is a triathlon kit. This is the Zoot P1 tri suit. This is over $350 custom with all the companies and sponsors on this. So this is a single piece. There's also two piece where this is just the shorts and you have the top. You can have a sleeveless top. Also forgot to mention, these are clothes. Technically they're gear, they're used for training, but cycling bibs and cycling shirts. So these shirts have back pockets in them so you can put conveniently your keys, phones, your food, nutrition in the back pocket. So that's the triathlon cost. Let's break it down. From least to most expensive, I'd say the running is the least and then swimming and then the bike. But as you get more training in, the swimming you do have basically all the equipment for a pretty long time. If those two kind of switches, so then the swimming would be the least and then running and then still the bike with all the maintenance would be the most expensive and all the travel with your bike, if you do travel. In conclusion, this is the breakdown here. I probably spent a lot more, maybe a little bit more due to like me buying just random stuff for different sports, the swim, bike and run. But to be honest, triathlon is a very expensive sport and I believe it's a very high entry to barrier. So unlike other sports like football, you just need a football, some cleats, basketball and good basketball shoes, access to a court. In triathlon, you have three sports to manage and two of those sports, the swimming and the biking, are pretty expensive. If you're looking to get into the sport, definitely go to like use garage sales or Facebook marketplace. Just try to see online because I know for me, I'm selling my old gear all the time and for like a very reduced price because I just want to get rid of them. And I know there's a lot of people that want to get rid of their bikes, their old gear, swim, bike, run. So just scour the internet and see what kind of deals you can find if you're starting out. If there's any specific gear you want me to go more in depth in, and especially on the bike since it's all custom, just let me know in the comments. This is the cost of triathlon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.